You may be seated just for a few moments. It's good to be here, family. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And yes, I'll have you uh, standing in just a moment again. But the Lord is in this house. Can you feel him? I can feel him. The Lord is in this place. And, and just very briefly, I want to share with you just a few things that are on my heart. And uh, um, the, the topic we're going to be dealing with today, just in short, is about managing my subscriptions. And so I want you to turn to someone and say, I want you to manage your subscriptions. And what was interesting was this week I was going through my email inbox and then all of a sudden there were like some things that I was like, why, 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 why am I still getting this email? Most of us, we have two or three email accounts. There's the one that all the coupons and all the junk goes to, right? You, you, you know, if you, and, and you probably have like 40,000 unread emails in that inbox. And then there's the one that you kind of only give out to certain people and, and that, that kind of reduces. But I believe that there is way too much clutter that we have even in our spirit man. And there, there's some things that we're going to have to unsubscribe from. There's some relationships that we have to hit the unsubscribe button because they aren't healthy for you. And the more things that you have that are coming at you that you subscribe to, you, you'll find it very difficult to hear the will of God for your life. And so I'm going to start with these just definitions, and then we're going to read this passage of Scripture. Amen. Are you guys ready? Managing my subscription, essentially choosing God's will over our will. God's will. Take a picture of this so you can get the definition. I'm trying to move out the way. Before I read it, God's will. Have you ever asked a question? God, what is your will? What is your will for my life? Or is this your will? And oftentimes, there are two reasons why we ask the question. One reason is that we really want to know. The other reason that we were trying to get God's will to agree with our will. God's will is the divine path that God has set for us is filled with directives and desires that lead to what? Spiritual growth and ultimate salvation. It's definition number one. Definition number two is the word subscribe. So when you subscribe to something, you are making a decision about its value in your life. So subscribe in the spiritual contest is to actively choose and engage with those things, activities, and persons that align with God's will. So we subscribe to the things that align with who? God's will. Unsubscribe. That's a practice that I believe those who are desiring to be mature in the faith that we mature will we now say there are some things I need to unsubscribe from. It is the practice of the action of deliberately removing those influences, whether internal or external, that do not align with God's will and may lead us astray. Anything that gets you off the divine path that God has set with you is what we need to unsubscribe from. Father, we you give you thanks. We bless you. We give you glory and we say, Amen. Stand to your feet, Matthew 7. Let me see your Bibles. Hold up your Bibles. Hold them up. Hold them up really high. Amen. I see it. All right. The reason why we bring the Word of God is that we are, and even why I ask you to hold it up is not to be like Joel Osteen. This is my Bible. I will do what is now. Because we realize that this, I'm going to hold up the word of the Lord as a banner. This is what I believe. It's not going to be under my bed. It's not going to be hidden. This, hold it, hold it up above your head. 
That's the standard. This isn't the standard. I hold up the word of the Lord in my life because this is the standard. This is what I, God has given me to try to live up to this standard. Matthew 7. Then read from verses 21 and 23. And then I'll be out your way so that we can see these sons and daughters get baptized today. But this is what it reads, verse number 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, let me paraphrase. Not everyone that goes to church and knows how to shout, sing, dance, give, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Because you see, on judgment day, and there is a judgment day, many will say, Lord, <laughs> didn't I sweep the church? Lord, did, did didn't I give offering, Lord? Didn't I serve on this team or that team? Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I performed many miracles in your name. I went to Bible school. I went to seminary. I did this. I did that. I, I, I even got my online theological degree for 1995. God, didn't I do all these things in your name? But I will reply. I never knew you. Get away from me, you who what? Breaks God's law. D just stand because I'm going to wrap up. And if you sit, then I'll go long. So it's up to you. I'm seeing. Anybody sitting? Okay, she said. I know there's a baby there. It's okay, sorry. Right. If I go long, I'm not terrible. I'm just kidding. Break God's law. What is God's law? What is God's will? In fact, let me share these eight things. This is going to be important. So you may need to. Eight things that are God's will. Because I think sometimes we are praying prayers that God has already answered. And is it possible that we are wasting the frequency of heaven asking for things which is already given answers? And so we're asking God to answer and God says, I've already given you the answer. You just need to pick up your word and actually read it. Or as we shared last week, you just need to mind your business. Amen. Number one, salvation, knowledge, truth. It is God's will that everyone comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus. It is God's will that everyone has the opportunity for salvation. Number two, what is God's will? That we are sanctified and holy. It's his will for you to be holy. And God desires us for us to be sanctified and to live holy. For this is the will of God. For your sanctification, that means you abstain from sexual immorality. It is his will. So do not question, well, well should I be sleeping with this person? On... Can I be honest? We're asking for things that God has already explicitly said. If you are not married, then you should not be engaged in any sexual activity with the other person. I don't care how much you say you love that person. That's his will. That each of you know how to control his body in holiness and honor. What else is his will that you would give thanks? Being thankful is another clear aspect of God's will for us. Give thanks in every circumstance, in every season, in every moment of the day. It is his will that you are thankful. It is also his will, number four, for you to do good. 
until you help this person or not. If it's good, then I believe it is his will that we will do good unto others, even others that don't do good unto us. Because if you only do things, good things to people that do good things to you, then you are just, you're responding to how they make you feel. But when a person knows God, you'll do good things to people that don't even like you. That's how, that's his will. It's his will for you to have wisdom and spiritual understanding, but you can't have wisdom and spiritual understanding if you don't read his word. So God wants us to grow in wisdom and spiritual understanding, which means you can't be at the same spiritual place as you were a week ago. I'm not even going to say a year. That means every week you should be growing in your spiritual understanding. But if you're not in the house, if you're not with a body of believers, if you're not reading the word, if you're not asking the Holy Spirit, teach me thy ways, then you will not grow in wisdom and spiritual understanding. YouTube cannot give you wisdom. They can give you some uh, another person's perspective, but wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit himself. It is his will that you are a person who promotes peace and reconciliation. You promote it, you live it, you express it. In fact, when you go into work and your work is full of chaos, they should say, here he comes, here she comes, the peacemaker. Yes. You are not the one to egg someone on. Do you, do, 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 do you know what she just said? You, no, no, no. You are supposed to promote peace and reconciliation. It is his will. And God's plan includes also the reconciliation of humanity himself. So that means if someone has wronged you, you seek to reconcile. Especially also if you have wronged them. It's not enough to say, well, God, I apologize to you. No, you got to apologize to them. Reconcile. It is his will. That we have prosperity and hope. Of course, Jeremiah speaks and he's written, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And that's God's will for your life, that you prosper. That you have hope. We don't have to wonder, is this God's will, is his will? And the final one is, it is as well for you to bear fruit in Christ. Because a fig tree that looks like a fig tree that has no figs is not a fig tree. And a Christian who looks like a Christian but who has no fruit is not a Christian. By your fruit ye shall know them. And you know that there are a number of fruit of the Spirit. And some of us, we feel like we should only have one of them. No, you need to have all of them. Now, it's good that we know what God's will is. But can I just share the inverse, the converse? Well, what, what is not God's will? Because I think this is where we sometimes get trip, tripped up. Is it God's will for me to go here, go there? Well, well, let me give you these and then we'll be out of your way. It is not His will for you to live in sin. The Bible is clear that God does not want us to live in continual and perpetual sin and in disobedience. For all have sinned, and we've all come short of the glory of the Lord, but it is not his will for us to continue in that lifestyle of sin. Amen? It is not his will for us to neglect to love others it's not his will for you to be so busy that you don't love the people that God has allowed to cross your path. So failing to show love to others is contrary to God's will. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is scripture. It is not his will for you to engage in conflict and disputes. Because God's will promotes peace rather than conflicts. And James 3 says, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. 
Stop getting involved in drama and asking God and the Holy Spirit to take you out. Just don't even engage. Know how to smile and keep it moving. Not everything deserves a response. You are not God. You don't have to, you don't need to tell everyone about themselves. Worry about the plank in your eye versus the speck in their eye. Number four, what is not his will? For us to neglect justice, mercy, and humility. It's not his will for you to ignore the plight of what's happening across the nations, what's happening across any people group. It is not his will for you to walk past injustice and say someone else will deal with it. It's not his will. But that we should practice justice, that we should show mercy, that we should walk humbly with him. The fifth one, what is also not as well for us to live in fear. Talk to someone and say, you better get out of fear. You're not called to live in it. You're not called to walk in it. You're not called to, 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 to move in it. You, you don't live in fear. Don't make decisions in fear that you are not called for that. That's not as well. And so if you're in a season where you say you're living in fear, you should be able to say, I know this is not your will for my life. Help my faith to understand and know that this is not my address. This is not where I'm supposed to live. I may be feeling fear, but I ain't living here. Number six, it's not as well for you to reject his guidance. For you to ignore his guidance through words. And so thy word is a lamp unto thy feet, a light unto thy path. If you don't read his word, then you won't be able to know the path. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean onto your own or TikToks or YouTube's understanding. It is not his will for you to be a hoarder of wealth. Accumulating wealth for your selfish interests so that you can be the top, so that you can have, is, that's not his will. Hoarding wealth and not helping the needs of others is sin. The Bible says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy. And where thieves break in and steal, it is not your, his will for you to hoard well. And, and finally, it, it is not his will for you to trip others. And I know it says causes others to stumble, but l l let me end with this. And especially those that are called and you're given the gift of leadership. Oftentimes, your decisions can be a stumbling block for others. The way how you say things, the way how we may do things. Imagine cursing out the person at the gas station. Could you ever lead them to the Lord? I mean, have there been people in your life that because of how maybe you mishandled the situation, all of a sudden you can't even be a witness to them any longer? And if that was your story before you were saved, I get it. If you mistreated people, but we cannot be a stumbling block for others, so we can't lead others into sin or causing them. And so uh, we, there, there are certain things that we should not be talking about with other people, especially younger believers, because it can lead them into sin as well. Amen. So I end with this. Many will say, Lord, Lord, I've done this. And what the Lord is promising, that if you don't unsubscribe from these behaviors, if you don't reject these attitudes, if you're not living according to what I've asked you, if you refuse, dare I say, if you refuse to get baptized, even though you know the Lord, it is not his will for you to have an opportunity to receive salvation and have an opportunity to express your love 
for you to refuse to accept him or to get baptized. That is not his will. So if you were here right now and you realize that you are maybe one inch, two inches, one centimeter outside of his will, God doesn't want any part of you in that region that is outside of what he truly wants because you will hear, I will hear, we will hear, I never knew you because you break my law. And maybe you're here today and you don't want to be a lawbreaker any longer. You don't want to be one that rejects what the Lord is speaking to you. In fact, even now, you want to embrace who he is fully. I want to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord now. Not just to say the words, Lord, Lord, but to truly desire his will for your life. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Just lift your hand right where you are. You're not waiting till tomorrow, until next week. I see those hands. Come on, lift those hands, lift them high. Don't be ashamed if you know that you're living outside of God's will and you want to now be able to be fully in it. I cannot afford to let you leave here without knowing the truth that he loves you and it is his will for you to be saved. He wants it even more than you do. For those that raise your hand, would you just... Everyone bow your heads, but I want to say this special prayer. And there's two I'm going to do. One for those that don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. You're outside of his will. Dear Lord, I come to you. And if that's you, just repeat these words after me. I come to you knowing that I'm standing outside of your will. I want to be in your divine will. I want to know you as my Savior. I want to know you as my Lord. I don't want any part of me to be outside of you. I want to know your words. I want to know your heart. And I want to live in accordance to what your word has declared for me. I recognize that I am human in need of a Savior. But I also recognize that you desire to live in my heart. And so I release my will. And I invite you, Lord, into my heart. Change my thinking. Change my walking. Change the way how I do things. Be seated on the throne of my life. And I make this commitment that I will walk with you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Thank you for loving me. I believe that you are the son of God and that you gave your life for me. And I fully embrace the freedom and the boundaries that comes with being a follower of Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. This is the part of the service where we get really loud and we celebrate those who have made this amazing decision. And family, if you made that decision today, then you are saved and it is his will for you to also be baptized. This last prayer.